Turok 2 Seeds of Evil was released on December 10th, 1998. It was a FPS game for the Nintendo 64 and a sequel to Turok Dinosaur Hunter for the same platform. The game had you playing as Joshua Fireseed of the Turok lineage on a quest to stop an alien being known as the Primogen from destroying the universe. There's a uh, a lot more to it than that, but uh, that's for a different video. Anyway, Turok 2 received great scores all around from the likes of GameSpot, IGN, Game Rankings, and even Nintendo Power. Of course, it wasn't perfect, being criticized for its poor frame rates and heavy use of distance fog, but overall it was highly praised by both fans and critics alike. Eventually, on March 16, 2017, Night Dive Studios released a remastered edition of Turok 2, featuring a brand new engine and compatibility for modern systems. No longer were frame rates and fog an issue, and players could explore the game's worlds like never before. And this remaster is where the speedrunning scene really began. It's difficult to find many runs of Turok 2 before the remaster was released. If you search Speed Demos Archive, you'll only find two of them. One is a 3 hour 55 minute run submitted in 2005, and the other is a 1 hour 55 minute run on the hard difficulty submitted in 2012. Maybe I haven't dug deep enough into the archives of the internet, but I think it's safe to say that the Turok 2 speedrunning community was very quiet until 2017. Once the remaster hit the scenes, there was a flurry of activity on speedrun.com. The first submitted run was a 1 hour 23 minute run by Grove Kase, who would go on to claim the world record numerous times between 2017 and 2019. The route was actually pretty normal for a game being speedran. There weren't many instances of glitches being used. It was more about following the optimal route, having good movement, and getting the necessary collectibles to finish the game. Oh my god. The first sub 101. However, what happened in 2020 would change everything. Specifically, February 2020. The only thing that stood between runners and the game being cracked wide open was. a door. It all started in late January of 2020. Yeah, I know the big title card said February 2020, just work with me here. As I was saying, in late January it started with an innocuous message from runner and glitch hunter Scuddy, claiming he had found what he called zombie mode. After some questioning, he posted a clip revealing that if you enter a portal on the same frame that you died, you come out of the portal with zero health, you would no longer take damage, and hazards that would normally instantly kill you like death pits and poison just wouldn't anymore. Immediately after this discovery, runners began theorizing and coming up with ways to implement this into the route. The first cracks in Turok 2 were beginning to show. A week later, after more experimenting, Scuddy came back with another trick, something he dubbed Ludicrous Speed. Ludicrous Speed? Sir, we've never gone that fast before. Really, it was the result of what happens when you fall into a death pit with zombie mode. Instead of dying like normal, you would instead start to build up velocity. Like, a lot of velocity. Ludicrous speed! Go! Hence the name, Ludicrous Speed. After this next breakthrough, more theorizing was done with how to utilize it, and how it could be added into the current route. Scuddy shared a possible method of acquiring a key item, a Primogen key, much earlier than intended. Runner Rafampin did some testing on this method, but ultimately, the trick was found to be too inconsistent to implement into the route. This would not be the end of Ludicrous Speed, however. The following week, Turok Dinosaur Hunter Runner and Schrodinger's retired streamer Pale would begin a stream attempting to experiment with and cook up some new ways to use the new tech. Unknown to anyone at the time, this stream would lead to what may be Turok 2's biggest discovery. I want to get it on port first, because ultimate goal is find objective skip. In Turok 2, each level has objectives. Normally, in a casual playthrough, the goal is to complete each objective, then find the exit portal. 
This will take you to a totem defense, where you need to defend the totem against waves of enemies. After that, you're teleported back to the hub, where you can then go to a different level. In the N64 version of the game, it was required to do this for each level. However, in the remaster, Night Dive added a quality of life change where you could enter a save portal and have the option to teleport to any other already discovered save portal. Since there's a save portal in the hub, this change allows players in the remaster to skip objectives as they desire, as technically to finish the game, all you need are the 6 Primogen keys which give access to the final boss. However, Port of Adi is the only level this doesn't apply to. To exit the level and get to the hub in the first place, you have to do the objectives and the tome defense. Save the four children, activate the three distress beacons, then defend the totem. These were non-negotiable and could not be skipped. That's the reason Pale started his testing in Port of Adia, because finding a way to skip the unskippable would be a massive time save. I don't want to do a single objective. The, port of the goal is to skip all of them. Your mission. That would cut so much time. Now obviously, I'm sure this has been worked on, and it's probably a pipe dream, but there is no but, I'm just hopeful. What's this over here? Sometime into the stream, Scuddy joined and informed Pale about another change Night Dive had made in the remaster. Which door? This one, Scuddy? How does that open? Does that only open after portal or after totem defense? Hmm. Got you. So this is the return portal back into port. Hmm. It was a small room on the side of the first map, which contained a portal leading to the hub. It didn't require any objectives, nor did it require totem defense. It was just a simple portal. That's where the fascination began. Because I did not know that portal was there, dude. I never knew that portal was there. That's just such a f***ing tease. You start the game, and your skip is right there. Because, dude, that's just like, man, I can't believe the level skip is right f***ing there. It's right there. There was just one problem with the door. So on Show Collision, these are the sort of gates. We have the same thing in Dinosaur Hunter. I don't know any way to skip them. Like this dark red, they're dark green in a Dinosaur Hunter. They're like impossible to skip past. There's just no way to skip the polygons. And they're built the exact same. Two polygons going across like that. So even if you can get past the first one, you're still in the second one and you're hard blocked. So that clipping through that is a very, very difficult proposition. Terrarch 2 is built on the Kex engine, which is extremely good at stopping players from going out of bounds or clipping through things they aren't supposed to. As it stood, getting past the door seemed almost an impossibility. In spite of this, Pale's stream continued to be focused around Port of Adia and finding some way to thwart the door. Unfortunately, despite his best efforts and the efforts of runners in the chat also searching, the door remained shut. Even after his stream, Pale was still fixated on the door, the ultimate skip in Turok 2. While his attention was still firmly on Port of Adia, Scuddy had been hard at work creating a new route utilizing zombie mode and ludicrous speed, which he shared the following day. This new route kicked off a spree of skip discoveries. These were a catwalk skip in Port of Adia, an optimization to the previously mentioned early primogen key in Hive, and a skip and layer of the blind ones. The hive and layer skips were later replaced with easier, more consistent strategies, but the Port of Adia skip was completely viable and still used in runs today. A few days later, Scuddy did more digging around the game and discovered that, in the final boss arena against the Primogen, a series of platforms was just out of bounds. The edges of these platforms had cutscene triggers on them, which would either show the intro to the fight, the bad ending, or the good ending. Very shortly after this discovery, Rafampane came up with a way to use ludicrous speed to launch to the bad ending cutscene, which is the same ending that the any percent route has. This strategy ended up being much faster than even the best RNG fight with the Primogen. As these skips and strategies were being discovered to save on time, 
the door in Port Vadia hadn't been forgotten. So yeah, if we could get into this portal, there's your port skip. There's your port skip, there's your objective skip, there's everything. It opened. That day, February 14th, 2020, the biggest breakthrough in Tarak 2 speedrunning happened. Scuddy was doing more testing around the door, and while doing so, he somehow found a situation where the door opened. It opened. This clip was quickly shared, but no one had any idea what happened. A relatively new runner saw the clip and started to do their own testing. They managed to recreate the door opening, but still had no idea why. All they had was a recording with the game over screen, which showed a single frame or show collision at the end of it. They posted this frame and consulted Pale about it, and it was determined that the game was detecting the player against a wall behind the door. Just a few minutes later, this clip was shared. Oh, well, you mean like zip from here? We try. This new runner had just discovered door skip, and that runner was Albert Einstein. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to make that joke. Seriously though, that that runner was it was me. It was me. The bell tolls. See, look here's the, here's the unblurred chat. <clears throat> anyway, Pale's seemingly far-fetched dream of getting past the door and skipping the objectives in Port Body was finally realized. This realization, however, came with some unforeseen consequences. Pandora's box had been opened. With this enormous discovery, testing immediately began, and much about what had just happened was quickly unveiled. It was found that during the game over screen, you still have control of Turok. This behavior acts very similarly to fly mode, where you can freely navigate in any direction, but are still constrained by the bounds of the level. It was also found that in this mode, you just move a lot faster than normal. This trick was originally called an astral glide, but was later changed to be called a bell slide. Within hours, and over the course of the next few days, multiple skips were discovered which are still used in the current route. The first of which was a skip discovered by Mr. Monkey in the second level, River of Souls. Sliding through this door skips a lengthy sequence of hitting a switch, jumping down to collect two keys, using those keys, waiting for the door to actually open, then swimming down a well to hit another switch. This skip saves about 40 seconds. Scuddy found a skip in the final level, Promogen's Lightship. The level is divided into four sectors, and Scuddy's skip involved sliding through these doors to go into the exit portal of Sector 1, saving around 45 seconds of travel time. Another was found by Pale in the fifth level, Hive of the Mantids. By sliding through this barrier and navigating this tunnel, you avoid having to go to a different area, jump down, shoot a turret, destroy a generator, then death warp to the star of the map. This ended up saving about 12 seconds. A major skip was found by Yudo in the fourth level, Laird the Blind Ones. You can slide through this closed cave door and enter a portal which skips climbing a group of dizzying platforms, navigating through a perilous lava lake, fighting a group of worms, then climbing a cave cliffside. This saves around a whopping 1 minute and 34 seconds. Mr. Monkey found another skip in Port of Adia. He found that you can bell slide into this tunnel on the second map, which skips a lengthy second map and overall saves about 25 seconds. Last, but certainly not least, Scuddy discovered another skip in Promage's Lightship. This skip was also in Sector 1, and involved briefly tagging this room to open the door, then sliding around these hallways to enter this save portal. Normally, you would navigate these different hallways and use the Whisper's Talisman to float to the room with the switch. This skip would be used for an alternate route later on. All of these skips were found within two days of Bell sliding getting unveiled. And this isn't even all of them. With all these new changes, myself and Scuddy got to work creating a new route. This new route looked like an entirely different run from what the game was just days prior. It utilized all the new skips, eliminated entire sections of the game, and most importantly, could shave a lot of time off the record. Even after this whirlwind of new strategies and routing, the community wasn't finished experimenting just yet. 
Months later, one skip in particular would be found, and would prove to be the most infamous of all the bell slides. This was a skip theorized by Rafampin, and it involved doing a complicated bell slide to reach a portal in Lair of the Blind Ones, which would bring you right in front of the Primogen Key. Normally to reach this, you need an item called the Whisper's Talisman, which allows you to ride air currents to reach normally inaccessible locations. The strategy was performed in fly mode, giving vision, but Rafampin wasn't able to pull it off in the darkness of the game over screen. And that's where I came in. After reading about Rafampin's idea and looking at his theorized path, I set out to try and pull it off in an actual game over setting. And I was able to. The difficulty and low success rate of this trick earned it the title of Bell's Hell. Even with optimizations to the techniques later on, the trick was still very tightly timed and required precise movement to pull off, and it very often killed runs. The benefit of getting it first try, however, was over a minute of time save. The advent of this trick also brought the community to a realization. We only needed one talisman to complete the run now. You see, in Turok 2, there are five talismans that give you special abilities and let you explore areas you couldn't before. These are the Leap of Faith, which will launch you to faraway platforms, the Breath of Life, which allows you to swim in poison water, the Heart of Fire, which gives you immunity to lava, the Eye of Truth, which reveals hidden walkways, and finally, the Whisper's Talisman, which, as mentioned before, lets you float to a different location. Zombie mode allows us to survive in poison water, so we don't need Breath of Life. Lava is never an obstacle in any percent, so that gets rid of the Heart of Fire. The walkways we need Eye of Truth for are actually reachable without the Talisman, so it's also not required. And Whispers, which we previously needed for Lightship and Lair, was now routed out by Scuddy's earlier Lightship discovery and the new edition of Bell's Hell. So now, the only necessary talisman in the game was just the Leap of Faith. After some planning, a new route was created, dubbed the Whisperless Route. This required different management of your lives and the pickups to gain extra ones, called Doritos, and it also required the difficult Bell's Hell to be performed. But, it was faster. Now, back to February 2020. With these new strats, it was inevitable that a new world record was right around the corner, and one runner, Chaos Wolf, was up to the task. Using only the new Port of Audio route, he achieved a time of 59 minutes and 50 seconds, just one day after Bell Slotting was discovered. Later that month, on the 27th, he got another world record, lowering the time to 55 minutes and 52 seconds. At the beginning of February 2020, getting a sub-hour time in Turok 2 any percent was nearly impossible without an impeccable run using all the known strategies. Now, every minute barrier down to 55 had been shattered. The route had completely changed, and new, never-before-conceived strategies were used all throughout, and it all stemmed from one simple desire. I can't believe there's such a potential time save. Like, right, I know I keep harping on this, but it's right there. To skip a door. By March 5th, 2020, the record had been lowered to 53 minutes and 23 seconds by Rafampin. In less than one month, the world record had been lowered by nearly eight minutes. February of 2020 was one of, if not the, most exciting and prominent months in Turok 2 speedrunning history. It was such a shakeup to the game that, eventually, the leaderboard was divided into any percent and any percent NMG, standing for no major glitches. To this day, the NMG category hasn't gone below 1 hour and 30 seconds, while the any percent category has gotten a handful of optimizations and smaller tricks. So currently, the world record for any percent stands at 50 minutes and 32 seconds by Chaos Wolf. So, what's next for Turok 2? Truthfully, it's hard to say. It's possible for the run to reach a sub 50 minute time, but that would require excellent movement and hitting every trick first try. Beyond that, we would need to find something truly groundbreaking. I'm certainly not ruling out that possibility, but for now, Turok 2 may be reaching a plateau with just how fast it can be completed. 
In conclusion, over the course of a little over a month, the Turok 2 speedrun was completely broken, and it was all possible because of a single door. Without Pale's fascination with the door, who knows how long it might have taken for these tricks to be discovered. Without his curiosity, his desire to break the game in the best ways, we may still be struggling to break the one hour barrier. Pale merely wanted to get past the door, but in the process, he sparked the fire that burned down 80%. Well, I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this history lesson on one of the most exciting times for Turok 2 speedrunning. If you're interested in joining the community and learning some of the games yourself, feel free to join the Turok speedrunning discord, which I'll link in the description. So be sure to check that out if you want to run the games. I'm serious, click that link. Anyway, I'm the Bell Tolls, and I hope I see you in the next one. Farewell.